Hi, I'm here in our next chapter of the posterior pituitary. Now, I've got some good news and some bad news for you about your posterior. And the good news is, is that there's a much smaller number of hormones. And oxytocin, which comes out of there, is pretty much irrelevant because it uh, operates as a non-essential extra hormone during parturition. Now, remember, not pregnancy, but parturition. Parturition. Is a, wow, wow. Why can't we just say delivery? because we could be talking about the New York Times here. Parturition. Where's the baby going? We're parting. Parturition. Say bye-bye to baby. But oxytocin, you can deliver, and you can have parturition even without it. Antidiuretic hormone is the only significant thing that we come hemming out of that posterior pituitary. And that truly is essential. So the good news is, is that we have one major hormone, the bad news is the nomenclature, the term, the very word antidiuretic hormone is already very difficult. The mind does not grasp negatives as easily as it can grasp positively worded things. So the, the, the complexity of not enough antidiuretic hormone, not enough anti, does that mean I'm plot four? Yeah, it's like two negatives. Negative, missing, the anti, is the same as having diuresis. I know, I know, it's difficult. It's difficult in this way. But you'll get it here in a second. So the other part of this is, is that you see this where it says it's a terminal of distal neuron terminals, terminal neurons. Unlike the anterior pituitary, which is much more chemical in terms of hormones, the posterior pituitary is more of an extension of the nervous system. Hmm, it's an extension of the nervous system. Okay. Arginine vasopressin. There is nothing that has so many names as ADH. It's known as arginine vasopressin. ADH, which is antidiuretic hormone. DDarginine vasopressin, DDAVP, which we use therapeutically. It can also be known as um, desmopressin. So ADH. DDAVP, arginine vasopressin, desmopressin, they're all the same thing. Oxytocin, as we said, is really only useful for people during the time of parturition. It's made in various, both of them, various parts of the hypothalamus, supraoptic nuclei, paraventricular nuclei. I have never been quite clear what benefit it is to make us memorize these names, but they're made up in these areas and then they travel down and get stored in the posterior. And the major thing is this, water. Water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink, says Samuel Taylor Coleridge, and so it is with antidiuretic hormone. The major thing for antidiuretic hormone is that it controls the total volume of water. And this is a big deal because, ready? Controlling sodium is not as much of a problem as controlling total body water. You can die today just by changing your water control inside your kidney tubule. The maximum production of your kidney for urine is 24 liters a day. Do you know that you could be making 24 liters of urine today if you had no ADH whatsoever? Just a little problem. Your entire blood volume's only five liters. Three liters of juice and two liters of red cells. That means that you could be excreting eight times your entire plasma volume in one day. That means if this system is truly damaged, you're dead eight times over. Dead eight times over. I don't even like being dead half a time. Now dead eight times over. Yeah, you could urinate out your entire plasma volume over and over again. That's why ADH is so critical. Now here's this next word, osmolarity. Now we're going to use that word interchangeably with osmolality. Osmolarity, osmolality, tonicity, concentration. We're going to end up be using those largely the same way. Next slide. Osmoreceptors. Osmoreceptors. Things that detect the concentration. Why is it that when I dry, I get thirsty? How come when I'm in the desert, I get thirsty? And when I'm out there and drinking a lot of water, I'm not thirsty. Osmoreceptors. Really cool. The osmoreceptors are up there in the hypothalamus. 
So the osmoreceptors are in the hypothalamus, and basically when it says extremely sensitive, we mean sensitive to one or two percentage. Normal serum osmolality is somewhere between 280 and 300. That osmolality, the concentration, is sensed in your hypothalamus, man, and when you get high concentration, it turns that antidiuretic hormone on, you're too concentrated. I'm too dry. ADH, go down to the kidney tube. You'll keep all the water, brother. The osmoreceptors say, you're too dry. You're too dry. Too concentrated. I'm drying out. Send the ADH down to the kidney tube. and tell them to hold on to an extra liter for me. <gasps> Goldilocks and the three hypothalamuses. Well, what if the osmoreceptors show that your osmolality is too little? No more ADH. Ooh, this osmolality is too high. This osmolality is too low. 280 to 300, this osmolality is just right. So, the osmoreceptors detect concentration. What makes you thirsty? The osmoreceptors. One hand in your brain to sensation to give you the subjective sensation of thirst. <laughs> All day long, I think about it. Then at night I say it, says Rumi, who am I and where did I come from? If I could taste one sip of an answer, I could break out of this prison for drunks. Until then, I'm like a bird from another continent, stranded in this aviary. The time is coming when I fly off. Rumi, right? If I could taste one sip of an answer, I could break out of this prison osmoreceptors gives you simultaneously the subjective sensation of thirst and at the same time sends the signal down to your posterior pituitary that tells your kidney tubules to reabsorb water. Wow, that's pretty cool, right? God, pretty divine. <laughs> okay, so they're very sensitive to maintain the extracellular fluid, ECF, extracellular fluid volume. Uh, I am not going to do a lot here about talking about extracellular, intracellular, because for this chapter, every time we say extracellular fluid osmolality, we mean intracellular fluid osmolality. They're pretty much interchangeable. Because in this chapter, um, although extracellular fluid volume is much less than intracellular, in terms of osmolality, everything's going to change in the same direction here, so we can actually use those interchangeably to make life a lot easier for us. So here when we say, well, your ECF osmolality is going too high, send the ADH to retain water. Well, although it's the ECF that's detected, the uh, changes go in the same direction for intracellular and extracellular. It's just ECF, extracellular, is what I tend to detect more. The same way when I'm walking down the street, I see people on the street more easily than I'm seeing the ones in their apartments. I mean, look at the street there, right? If you look out in the street, most of the time, there are more people in the buildings than there are out in the street. More people in the buildings than there are out in the street. What do you detect? Who's active? The ones that are not bound into the buildings or the cars. What do you detect and react to? The ones that are extra silent outside the building. Like if this room here is a cell. Well, if you're reacting, you're reacting to the ones that are outside in circulation. But it's only the minority, isn't it now? 4%. Plasma volume. 4%. I'm 100 kilograms, me. 60% of me is water. That's 60 liters. But out of the 60 liters of me that's water, how much is intracellular? Two-thirds. Two-thirds. Wow. So the truth is, is that most of me, there's two-thirds, 40 liters of my 60 is intracellular. Wow, 60 liters. Why, I'm like an ocean. <laughs> Dive in. There it is. So... The circulating volume that the osmoreceptors pick up is extracellular fluid, which is the minority. Now, the second bullet point here about resetting of the osmoreceptor. Resetting the osmoreceptor downward in pregnancy. Man, what does that mean? Do you speak the English language? What the hell does that mean? What that means is, is that if your normal range is 280 to 300, we want the normal range to be lower in pregnancy. Why? 
Well, if you had an osmolality of 290, you would not go out and drink water. Because you're like, I'm normal. Huh. In pregnancy, if we set the normal range from 280 to 300 and make the normal range 260 to 280, now that 290, which before was normal, now all of a sudden is hyperosmolar. So in pregnancy, you drink more water. Why? Because the osmol receptor has been set further down. Why? Because we want you to drink more water when you're pregnancy. Why? Because when you're pregnant, there's an increase of your plasma volume of 50%. How come? Because the osmol receptor normal level has been set low. For you and me, 290 is normal, but for the pregnant woman, that's hypertonic she drinks. She drinks more water. That's how we get that 50% increase in plasma volume. She drinks more water. Now, the other thing is this, is that the uh, volume receptors are not as detailed. Here we go, volume receptors. Volume receptors are not as detailed. They're not as precise. You have to change 10, 15%. That's change above 10 to 15%. Since the time of Aristotle was studied, how much do you have to change the weight of an object before you detect a difference? And uh, Aristotle wrote a lot about sensory perception. And even in the time of Aristotle, he wrote that you had to change the weight of something by about 20% before you detected a difference. He said, close my eyes. OK, we're going to put in five drachma coins. Now we're going to change it to four drachmas, or euros, I guess now. But anyway, Aristotle changed it from five to four. It has to be a 20% change really to be perceptible. And that's the same with volume receptors. Remember, above 15% is 20%. But osmo receptors, 1% or 2% change. In other words, if your osmolality is 300, that's the upper limit of normal. A 1% change going to 303, and it'll send ADH down. 1% change from 300 to 303, oh, ADH, go down there and get me a gallon. So osmo receptors detect very small changes. Volume receptors detect larger changes. Where are the volume receptors? Hmm. Oh, yeah, there. Hmm. Oh, yeah, there. Atria and carotids. Atria and carotids. The volume receptors are here and here. Osmos in here. Concentrate in your brain. <coughs> Largeness in your heart. Volume. Largeness is detected in the heart. Largeness is detected in the heart and concentration in the brain. I would while away the flowers. i will concentrate with the flowers. If I only had ADH, I would increase free water absorption. And yes, that's right. Concentrate in the brain. Largeness is in the heart. Next slide. Oh, there we go. We get a picture of the same thing. There it is, osmoreceptors there. What are they pointing to? There, there, that dot. Yeah, the point is it's in the hypothalamus, okay? And then when you have increased osmolality, you get more ADH, and the ADH goes down to your kidney tubules and make you retain free water. If you detect less osmolality, oh, you're too, you're too overloaded. You shut off the ADH. Are you ready? If you drink a ton of water or liquid, it will shut off the ADH and you'll urinate. Another way of saying it, is that saying that it inhibits the ADH? You could think of it that way. It decreases it. That's why when you go out drinking a lot of beer, you urinate the beer volume and extra. Alcohol inhibits antidiuretic hormone. That's why when you drink a lot, you get a hangover. Why? It inhibits anti-diuretic hormone. Your diuresis makes your volume depleted. That's why when you drink beer, you drink it, you urinate out all the volume of the beer and more. Hence the phrase, you do not buy the beer. You only rent it because alcohol inhibits anti-diuretic hormone and you get hangovers. See? That would be my form of USMLE, okay? A uh, USMLE teacher in his 40s comes in tremendously hungover. He's got a headache, and bright lights are bothering his eyes. Which of the following is the most likely mechanism? Alcohol inhibiting ADH release from the hypothalamus. 
alcohol inhibiting ADH synthesis and release from the hypothalamus.